Hi Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This is going to be a reading about embracing our intuitive abilities, and it's going to be from the 16th to the 31st of August. So if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bull sing as we see what the tarot has to say. And I want to just apologize for my voice before we let the vo bull sing because I am getting over the flu, so do bear with me. All right. Scorpio, August 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. Embracing and increasing our intuitive abilities. Angels, August 16th to the 31st, 2021. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. So at the bottom is our root itself. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the moon coming forward, Pisces energy. If we have Pisces energy within our natal chart, this is going to be an energy that grounds us during this time. And we have the high priestess. There's very much a sense of mysteries being revealed and greater understanding really being acknowledged. There's a sense of us operation, operating on a higher plane during this time. Uh, repeated with the high priestess. This is a time where we have two high priestesses so far. We are absolutely in tune with spirit and the power that comes forward. We've been slowly and steadily building this for quite some time. Now we have to trust what is coming forward with the six of swords. We have the seven of pentacles, patience, the king of wands, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, with the Knight of, of Pentacles here in the public, in the inner self. We have Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So these two in our natal charts, they'll be coming through the Earth Sign Energy in our inner self, the Fire Sign Energy in our hearts with the King of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And then we have the Hangman. We just don't see things the same way as everybody else. And you know what? That's really going to be okay. We have the King of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And we have the Star card, Aquarius. So very strong Aquarius energy, very strong connection with our dreams, 
with our greater desires. This is going to be a time where if you keep a dream journal, if you want to start keeping a dream, a dream journal, this is the time to do it because your dreams are going to reveal a lot. But there's also something about a sacred inner wish that is really starting to come forward if you start to trust yourself, if you start to put your power in what you know and in the kind of process of, of awakening and see where this takes you. Now, the energy we have to be mindful of during this time, what is the energy that Scorpio needs to be mindful of? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. And it is the Lord. It's Aries energy. It's falling in love with power. So we have to be mindful of ourselves when this starts to, to come forward. We can really start come, falling in love with power, falling in love with this sense of, you know, look what I can do, this intoxication of, wow, let me move forward like this. And so the, the Lord it says, you know, step back, step back just a little bit, stand in your power. Most definitely, we also have to be aware not to be afraid of the power that we're embracing, but not to let it encompass us. We're also going to be very drawn to people who we see as very powerful. And these people during this time can be powerful, can have a lot of answers. They're not necessarily going to be right for us because they're on a different journey than we are. And we have to be aware of that. It leads us to our chakra energy for this time. Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. And that's play. It's being able to be at a place in our hearts, in ourselves. This is the heart chakra where we are able to play. The thing with play and the thing that's so interesting about play is that human beings cannot play unless they feel safe where they are. So embracing a safety where we are. If we feel safe where we are, it's saying get out and play, laugh, have fun, start enjoying life. Let yourself kind of have this sparkle about you that other people who aren't playing, who aren't enjoying, don't have. If you don't feel safe, it's time to enter into an agreement with, with ourselves that I'm going to let my heart chakra shine through play and I'm going to do what it takes to be able to embrace joy and laughter, to be able to embrace happiness and to be able to move forward in this happiness. That starts to take away so many of the shadows that are around us. Now, Scorpio, we like the shadows, okay? That's a place where we really are kind of comfortable in the shadows, but we like the shadows because we know the shadows. These are the shadows of fear that play and joy and the embracing of our hearts as a water sign energy is going to be so imperative for us to be able to embrace our intuitive abilities, to be able to embrace increasing who we are and our path forward and what we are discovering within our lives. So this is going to be a time where the light bulbs start to go off, where we start to say, oh my gosh, you know, this is what I need. This is what I desire. We start to face our fears and our fears turn from that thing that holds us back from that thing that keeps us from moving forward the way that we want to, to that thing that starts to inspire us, to that thing that starts to move us forward, to this sense of, oh, okay, you know, this is what I was afraid of, but this is what I was really afraid of. I'm getting down deeper into the nitty gritty of it. And I'm really starting to see me openly and honestly. Sometimes we don't want to. The thing with the high priestess is we're not able to turn backwards. We're just not. The high priestess says, this is who you are and you have to see it openly and honestly. We're not able to put the veil back on other people, and we're most certainly not going to be able to put the veil back on ourselves. This is a time where we need to embrace our ideas and our inspiration and our wonderment and the sense that the quiet waters run deep. And where are these waters running to? What is inspiring me? What is leading me forward? What do I want? What do I desire? What do I need? And how is that opening up my life to me. The high priestess starts to open up ourselves to ourselves. We start to see ourselves more and more and more with an openness, with an honesty. This is going to be a time where a lot of revelations come at night. If you can do your meditation at night, if you can have a little nighttime ritual, like I like to have a cup of tea at night before going to bed, if we can do that, that's going to be something that really starts to ground us within our own intuitive power, within our own understanding, just because we're giving ourselves sacred time to be with ourselves. And the moon is going to be a very much a rooting aspect of who we are, during this time. It moves us to gathering up our knowledge, gathering up our understanding, and starting to move forward. In our inner selves, we're going to see ourselves starting to break down barriers that have been there for a while. Things that have held us back for quite some time, they're starting to fall apart. They're starting to fall away. And we're starting to see ourselves being able to be inspired, being able to move forward, being able to go after 
what we want and what we need and where it is that we want to be. It moves us to the Knight of Pentacles, slowly and steadily building something of substance. So as we're embracing our intuitive abilities, as we're looking at things openly and honestly for ourselves, we're saying, what do I want to build? What is my long-term goal? Now it can be a really simple and maybe, you know, we might think blasphemous long-term goal. Maybe I want to make money off of this. Maybe I want to be able to inspire others, which we might not seem at, see as blasphemous, you know, but being able to say, okay, I'm going to be honest with myself. What do I want? So how do I get to the point where I'm good enough to be able to put myself out there, to be able to embrace this intuition, to be able to trust my gut, to be able to move forward. Now we don't have to do something and make money off of, let's say the tarot or the runes or, you know, yoga or whatever it is that we're doing that helps to inspire us, that helps us connect to our sacred self. It can be that we start to listen to ourselves to say, okay, should I take this business deal? Should I not take this business deal? Should I trust this person? Should I not trust this person? And as we start to embrace that gut feel, that intuition, that sixth sense that we have, we start to see ourselves moving forward in prosperity. But we have to start small. And we have to start with small things that we can kind of see come true within a day. This is even saying, you know, if you have a pack of cards, if you have a pack of tarot cards, start throwing them every day before you leave the house. Ask yourself one question that you want to be answered. Ask yourself one thing that you want to be able to focus on during this day as you're embracing yourself and what you desire and where it is that you want to be before you go and have breakfast with the kids. You know, what is it? Or you get everybody ready. You know, what is it? that is evolving or becoming or you're gaining an understanding of. And even if it's like, what it, do you need to be able to focus yourself with before you start the day at school? You know, before everybody starts, you know, kind of coming at you and things start coming at you. This is a time where we need to embrace the fact that the veil is being lifted. We need to embrace the fact that we're not going to be able to hide behind lies. And it's not saying that we hide behind lies, but we as human beings, we do. We hide behind lies. We hide behind comfortable truths that aren't really that comforting, but we just have known them for so long that we think that they're comforting. We think that, oh, okay, it's okay that this is happening because this always happens. You know, this chaos is always a part of my life. And this is going to be a time where we see ourselves starting to change. We see ourselves starting to move forward. We see ourselves starting to say, no, but why? But why am I holding myself back? Why am I keeping myself from my dreams? Why am I keeping myself from moving forward? Even if this is to embrace your intuitive power so you become a better artist in whatever modality of expression you want to embrace, whether it be music or art or storytelling, you know, this is a time where we start to see ourselves embracing the fact that we can see more deeply and we can kind of go places that other people can't. Now, as a Scorpio in and of yourself, you can go places that other people can't. So this is a time where we need to kind of just dive a little bit deeper, which may make us feel a little bit more cut off from others. And that can be where I can see the hangman coming in, in the heart where like, I feel different and I don't always want to be the different one. Sometimes we can say, oh, I'm totally cool with being the different one. I'm totally fine with it. But sometimes we just want people to be able to understand. And we don't always want to be the one standing out. And so there's a sense of embracing patience, embracing patience with the prosperity that we're embracing by embracing this kind of spiritual, maybe alternative route to awakening and understanding, embracing this desire and hope and dream and wish that we have for ourselves, it brings us to the place of the King of Wands. It brings us to this place of, of power, to the place of fire and determination and focus and greater understanding. But we have to have patience with that because the water goes out. It goes out to the different seeds. It starts to really hydrate and nourish that which becomes so much greater. And it's because we're hands-on. It's because we're not afraid to go after what we love. We're not afraid to embrace what we desire. We're not afraid to look at who we are openly and honestly and tenaciously, that we are able to see our hearts so powerfully. And what we feel during this time is going to be so intense. So we kind of have to step back from things because it can actually seem more than what it appears to be to everybody else. It doesn't mean that it's not going to be important. It just means that it might not be as critical. Like it has to be done right now, the way that it's appearing in our minds. So being able to embrace our ideas, being able to embrace our intuition, being able to embrace our fire, giving it time, giving it patience, even though we feel like it needs to happen right away, it's going to be really, really important 
because the hangman says, again, we don't see things the same way as everybody else. So we can't expect kind of people to jump on the wagon with us to understand where we're coming from because it's just going to be so unique. It's going to be so special. And we have to also embrace the different way that our heart is looking at things. And instead of yelling at ourselves and saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is wrong. I can't believe that, you know, I'm seeing it this way and everybody else is seeing it that way or it's supposed to be like this. The book says it's supposed to be like this. Starting to accept ourselves and say, okay, well, this is what it means to me. And this is what I'm embracing. I'm embracing my intuition, which isn't going to be like everybody else's intuition. So letting myself walk forward and saying that just because I don't conform doesn't mean that I'm wrong and it brings us then to the king of swords it brings us to a person who is the warrior king who cuts through doubts and fears and lies to be able to stand in truth in greater understanding and that's what we're doing for our inner self during this time for our public self during this time we are cutting through so much malarkey and we're saying this is what it is you know this is how i have to move forward people might see us a little bit more combative during this time because we're not putting up with lies and deceits and it's going to be something that is innately going to just go against us it's going to be like nails on a chalkboard it's i mean you'd be like no i can't do this and i don't want to this is going to be a time where we see ourselves starting to reveal what is really important, starting to gain a greater understanding, starting to push ourselves forward in a way that changes the game. And as it changes the game, we start to see our wishes becoming more. We're starting to see ourselves embrace the stars. The stars, the ancients, our ancestors, were led by the stars. They mapped their paths by stars and by birds when they sailed out at the sea. And so it sounds like a story. It sounds like the beginning of a story. Our path was, was mapped by stars and birds, but it isn't. It is the way that things actually were. And so during this time, we start to see ourselves kind of falling back to old traditions, even if they're just old traditions, like, oh, my grandmother used to tell me the story. Oh, my great-grandmother used to tell me the story. Oh, my grandfather used to, you know, go walking down this path with me, and we used to talk about this or that. And it's like, oh, these things are coming up. Why? My mother used to say this. Why? You know, why are these things coming into my head? My father, this was always what he said. This was the smell of his, like, you know, cologne or his, you know, pipe tobacco or whatever it is that they had. And this is going to be a time where we see these memories coming around us. We see these things guiding us forward and we see ourselves embracing what we wish, like what that person embodies for us and what their story, what their history calls us forward to. And this is going to be a time where we start to see not what we want, but what we need coming forward because the divinity is pulling that forward in us powerfully and intricately. This is a time we can get lost in the fight for our dreams. And that's not necessarily a bad thing to be so consumed with the fight for our dreams that we don't see anything else. But this is a time where as we connect deeper and deeper with our own intuition, we see that maybe I don't have to fight for my dream. Maybe I have to move forward and work hard and be tenacious and see things differently and be patient. But the fighting, the anger, maybe that has to fall away. A little bit left to kind of like spice things up just a bit to give me that tenacity and that, you know, spunk to move forward in, but not to, to drown me. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Prince of Swords. And the Prince of Swords, when we need to be mindful of the Prince of Swords, is when we let ourselves kind of run away with ourselves. We let ourselves get the better of ourselves or we let people be impulsive and impatient and you know impractical around us and we know it we know that there's a part of them where they're thinking oh this seems like like a bad idea maybe you shouldn't do this like you know maybe things shouldn't be so chaotic right now but we're going to be intrigued by that too because we want things done and the patience that's going to be really hard so just being aware of that and being able to step back and say okay you know what patience is something i'm going to have to work on during this time so much is being revealed that I want things to move forward quickly, but it's going to move forward slowly, steadily, and methodically. And I understand that. Our subconscious chakra message is psychic development. And that's the third eye chakra. That's exactly what we're going for during, the, during this time. To embrace our intuitive power is to embrace our psychic power. This is a time where we're subconsciously, literally focusing on our psychic development, our own intuition, our own holistic understanding of self and desires and way to move forward. And this is a time where we need to kind of step into our third eye, step into what is unseen, but what is powerfully leading us forward. Our subconscious rooted energy is the chariot. 
this is cancer energy this is rising above the clouds rising above the murkiness the doubts the fears the chaos and being able to move forward in determination focus with a greater understanding of the heart and what is wanted and also a greater you know kind of tenacity fierceness it moves us to our subconscious in ourself which is the ace of wands passion determination fire there is a sense here of i'm going after what i want we're definitely taking this gift in our hearts it's not going to be as powerful as if we had the king of of wands here in our inner self so just being mindful of that but the ace of wands is coming in and saying this fire is burning bright i am tenacious i am focused and i'm going after it period end of discussion it brings us then to our subconscious heart self which is the three of wands there's a new avenue opening up there are new pathways forward new inspiration guiding us there's a new sense of what is to become and that's going to be something that's very exciting for us we're seeing things in a very new way and that's going to be something that opens up doors this is a time where our heart starts to lead us in new powerful beautiful directions it brings us then to our subconscious public self and that's the two of wands and the two of wands is this sense of I get to explore. There's more out there that meets the eye. A lot of times these readings have been saying it's all within, but in the public arena, we have to explore. We have to kind of go out there outside of our comfort zone. It's not going to all be within. There's going to be things that are discovered that is by us going outside our comfort zone, outside where we, you know, feel, you know, safe or secure or like, oh, okay, this is it. And being able to open up that door, that's going to be, that's going to be something extraordinary. And we're going to find that actually really fun, even though a lot of us just don't want to do it because we have the high priestess here and the high priestess is very, very comfortable in, in the shadows, in the, in the background, you know, not leaving the house. But this is going to be a time where a lot is discovered by pushing outside of our comfort zone. And it could be that we stay in the house, you know, but we, we are able to express more and more because again, we push outside of our comfort zone and we see what's to be explored. All right, Scorpio, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. I hope, yeah, light, love, peace, and happiness. I hope that this reading resonated with you. And yeah, let's end this reading with a clearing of our negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the prosperity that is to come. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Scorpio.